you know, so where's the next piece of this thing? Like right here, maybe right here. I don't know. We're working just with one random time frame. I'm working the wrong direction here. So I should have started right here. Oops. Just click there. If we start on the four hour, and I even really should be starting on the daily. There's your four hour, right? You break that range, you're, you're, you're down into this range in here. Hey, you never actually reached it yet. Yeah, but this makes sense. I mean, yeah, this makes sense. It's just holding whatever this is holding. It's at like the four hour backside level, I think. No, it's very possible. Yeah, I haven't really uh, for our backside. This guy right here. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Makes sense. It's the backside of the next range. First test of the range. Yeah. You could also say it's this right here mm. or this right here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, indeed, I would actually start with a higher time frame here. I would. Uh, I would go and say, okay, well, twelve hours there, twelve hour backside. Is there a greedy part, greedier part of this backside? Not really. Is there a greedier piece of this range? Yeah, right here. Uh, you can go one time frame greedier here. You could say this right here is where it starts to move through. Yeah. So it's just the deeper piece of that same range. Like you could even go to the 15 and say, okay, well, is there any, any deeper piece of that range? No, because it's one candle break. So you, you can't really go any deeper into that range. So you're just on the back side of a of the next range, right? And then and then the front side is down here with the current range and the backside front side combination levels down here. But yeah, getting back to your question, Dilbert, you, you, you can see that same staircasing in here, that same, same polarity. And it's, it's going to be the same polarity against trends. 30 minute to 30 minute right here, breaks that, moves up, hard closes to here, breaks that, moves up, hard closes to this guy right there, breaks that, moves. It's the same cycle that we create, right? Same, same cycle with a base of a range. Hold level holding through trends, right? Same, same, same piece here that was first here and then cycles to here and then just cycles out to its final piece until there's, you know, a trend breaks and there's nothing left. Like, you know, flip this upside down and uh, you'll, you'll see it too at the same time. You know, this is the last level when there's nothing left untested. You break that and you move to this. You break that, you move to the next one. Same, same base of the range, like, you know, just always flip your chart upside down. This is developing mm -hmm. higher pieces the whole, the whole way through. This is developing the base and it's like cycling through and you're laddering up with the uptrend, right? Like even here, for example, this guy right here, you can see where the final moment in this trade is. If you, if you follow like the, um, and, and it's why we shorted this, right? Because it was like the, the greediest piece of this entire range. And if this range breaks, like what this was testing back here is going to go up to its next untested piece or tested piece or what, what, whatever it ends up going to, right? Like, but the point being is that this is your polarized moment. Like this level is already gone. This isn't even anything you should take on the charts. This one was gone, right? You, you guys saw how I did that on the one minute charts. That was one of the ones I posted in the week in the, because, because again, it, it's just testing the greediest piece of this range, just like you're going to test the greediest piece of this range. And that's the greediest piece right there. And that's the greediest piece right there. But you know, once that's tested, it's gone. And, and then you've got this right here. And once that's tested, it's gone. So, so you could theoretically work down from this point to see the final break moment. Where is that right here? So, so then you have kind of starting like this between this level and this right here, something like that. You can see where this tests, right? Like you can actually just delete this and make it a little clear. Even there, this is like the whole level that should, you know, represent this. And, and once this breaks, and then you could even try to find the greedier part of that range to short it, right? Like the greediest point in a ladder. Uh, that's continuing to hold right there. Is there anything else? Or is that it? No, that's like it, because this is already tested here. So that's kind of it right there. So then, you, you know, if you break over this, you should be moving up just the same way we broke over top of this range here. So you, you'd be developing the same base of the range here, like whatever this is holding, right? You're going to have that same cycle like this, you know, first trend, come on, second trend, third trend. And, and, and it's like, okay, 
look at your shields. Like there's, there's nothing left, right? Like even we can just delete this bigger trend because we know what's going to happen. It's going to break it. But even, even in the silical part of the move, like this is the final hold level. If that can't hold. And then here, like you're, you're, you're hanging on to like the thinnest of levels. And this right here is next. I get over this and it's just like, it's so thin at this point that there's like, it's just waiting to break out. There's literally nothing back tested on any of even, even this was like the last point, which creates like another last point, quote unquote. Right. So it's, it's no wonder it just snaps up like this because it's just, there, there's literally nothing left. Even, even this was questionably like nothing left and it still manages to come down and test the base of its range, wherever it is down here. That's, you know, laddering from this point to holding this piece of the ladder to what would now be, I'm sure there's like something maybe in the one minute on here, but we could just call it like this or, you know, whatever it is in here. But you, you know, these, these are very polarized moments. Like this here is polarized, this here is polarized. And that gives you your, your trade right there, just gaps to the next moment. But again, you know, which trades am I taking? Well, th th this 96.13 was smart because it was here. The stuff in here is not smart as a short. Obvious reasons, like there's, there's no levels tested on the left. So when it snaps up like this, you, should, you shouldn't be surprised. Just like when this snaps up through its range, you also shouldn't be surprised when it starts to, you know, hold its move. You know, when it starts to hold something like whatever this is here, I'm sure there's like a little move up here. When, whenever it starts to hold this, it should, it should come to as no surprise that, you know, the inevitable is about to happen and you're, you're about to start cycling up your range. Then you just simply snap over that too, right? So yeah, there, there, there's definitely those moments that exist from, from this purple down, but you have to file, follow the trail of your untested holds, right? Like you have to follow the trail of the hold ups. Like what, what's, what's left in this trade, right? Like, you know, this is tested. You can't, it can't be that. So it has to be inside of this range which ends up being a one minute level right here, which was the greediest part of the range, but it also makes it a great trade. Like it makes it a very good trade, but that's why I have that trade at 96.14 earlier this week, because it was just, it was a super smart trade. There was just, why not take that level? It's what can ladder the move down. And if, and if that breaks, it's just coming right up to here anyways. So like, it's uh, very, very much like there's no trades that exist between that area and this area for sure. You know, do the same thing on the bottom side. You would, you would, you know, follow your trail to the bottom side here. Same thing on this side. You know, this, it's like, okay, well, you can no longer be buying this. It's already moved through. And, and this is a high time frame, So you're going to have some variation in here. You, you can't say, oh, here's a four hour. Let's, you know, you're, you're going to have variation there because you're going to go like this and you're going to say, oh, okay, well, there's, you know, something obviously right here, which gives you, you know, a bit of a better buy, right? Which gives you the moment from here. Right. So you could go here and you could say, you know, where's the untested piece here? Uh, right here. Is this a good buy? Yeah. It's a hell of a buy. Right. Because it's just, it's just like the greediest piece of that range that's untested and it, and it provides to be a good buy. So, so you're just, you're, you're doing the same thing on the other side too. You're just, uh, here's the range, but, but the range exists from like this point, like somewhere, somewhere from right here, the start of, of the break to the hold itself, right? Like there, there's some, some piece of the range in here. So, so then that became like a great buy right there. And then, you know, you, you do the same thing like this. This is a great buy, but, but the, the range exists like from here to here. So, so like the same thing we went through last time, right? Like, is this a good buy? Yes, it was a good buy. An hour later, it was a great buy, right? And then, and so, so this can't be used anymore. So let's work off of that. So let's say it has to be from this point forward, right? Because, because that's where it is. And so, so then you have a level right there. So, so the same piece of that range, right? Like, and then, and then, you know, so, so between here and there and what, you know, what becomes a greediest level, uh, there's nothing there. Yeah. There's this here, but it has to be above that, right? It has to be above this. Okay. We have something here. Okay. That's a greediest point. Let's go to the one minute before we check. Greediest point right there, completely untested. Aha, you see, perfect. So you, you do the same thing on both sides, right? So when you're, when you're looking at trading, but you have to continue to trail that through, right? So you would have been between 
these two points and this side of it, like you, you were saying between here and here. And so you can see where like the perfect entry was here because it was inside this range. And then, and then once that's developed, you had a perfect entry here and now, and now you have it here. And then you can develop it from here. Like where's the next entry, right? So then you can just kind of go and do this and put that there and then, and then trail through backwards again, right? Okay. So that's already tested. So we have to kind of be from here to here somewhere. Like the range is going to exist inside of here. So then we can go like this and say, okay, well, where's that range? Okay. Well, it's fine. There's a 30 minute there. What else is there though? There's nothing there. Okay, we have this right here. So here, it wasn't actually tested. That would have been a good buy though. That would have been a good spot to long. Or you could have been inside of this range trying to get right here, right? Like whatever this is holding. But you see, this is the same thing we just looked at up here. This is the, the base of the range developing through trends, right? Go, going back to that other side, like you've got trend here, goes through, trend here, goes through. And, and I'm sure there's a higher time frame trend. This, this looks like the 15 minute right here. And this is kind of the whole level. And, and so you break trend, you move up, right? And then, and then you're here against this, which gives you, again, your, your entry off of this ladder point. But again, you can move it from here and go back and say, well, where's the greediest point? That greediest point is right there. It's clear as day. And if that can hold through trend, so, so it exists on both sides, right? And, 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 and again, this is like, okay, long if this is holding, short if this is closing. Because we don't, we don't have a bias to say, oh, I think we're going long. Like we, of course, have a bias for human beings, but we don't, we don't sit there and say, I think we're going long. So no matter what happens, I'm going to long. So simply long and if it holds trend, right? Like, okay, let's take this one away for a second. Here's your level. Simply long this if it continues to hold through trend. Just, just long it. Because as long as it stays on this side, you can long. If it breaks down to this side, you can short, but just realize where your next point is because it's all polarized, right? Like if you short there, can it go here? No. Can it go here? Mm, possible, yes. Probably not because it looks like maybe, well, it can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. So actually maybe it can go here. So, so you, you, you know, your short exists from here to here, like short to target, right? And then if that breaks, you're just down into the next range, like down right here, 94 or whatever. So, so it, it exists on both sides. And hope, hopefully that, um, does that help Dilbert? Like understand like where the trades exist from, like we, uh, we, we delete all of this and early in the week we said, okay, we're going to short this. But then like you guys saw, I took this trade, how I justified that trade. And then even, even there, like, okay, could you take this trade? Yeah. But just, just find the range again, because we're just, we're just doing that same range find, right? Like we're just sitting here saying, okay, where's the greediest point versus how thin is this move? Where could it go versus where am I getting entry? Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, so you're kind of, you know, you're between those two points. So you can say, okay, well, let's, let's find a level. Even there, right? even the three minute would have been like, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Was there a deeper piece? Yes. Could this have held the move up? Yes. Absolutely. Um, this could have absolutely held the move up, but did it go for the deeper piece? Yes. But then, then, you know, you're 94, 91 versus what? $3 difference. Probably just take 94, 91. It hits 98. Sure. Yeah. It hits 98. Just like here's a 30 minute. Okay. That looks really good. Is there a better 15? Sure. What's the difference here? $5. I'd probably just take the 98, 95 and I'd probably front run that by a dollar, which, which got me my first entry on this trade. You know, do I take 94, 91 or not? like a $3 difference? If you're going to front run 94, 91, you might as well front run that less because if you're going to front run 94, 88, you're probably going to front run that to 90, like at least a minimum a dollar and at a dollar you're right at 94, 90 anyway. So you might as well go 94, 90 as a long like and 10 cents because you're just at that point where if you're going to go 94, 88, 82, and you, you add $1 to your long to front run it, eight cents off of 94, 90, which is only a dollar and 20 cents away from your other short. So there's kind of just like a, you're less than $3. What is that? Like $2 and uh, 60 cents, something like that. $2 and 60 cents. Um, $2 and 60 cents away. If you're going to front run it by a dollar anyways, which puts you at a dollar 50 front run or something, you know, and that you might as well just swallow the one extra dollar and take the, you know, you know, same, th same thing I'm doing here. Like 
do I short 9490 or the, the 30 minute level, which is a little stronger? Yeah, just short the 30 minute level. If this level was up here, right? If this was actually up here on the charts, I probably would have done 9700 because there's a you know reasonable enough difference there to say like yes, this is you know, but but a few dollars like that versus such a strong level. I just can't see it making sense going deeper. It's the same thing here. Like it, you're three dollars away. Can you test the deeper level? Yeah. Personal choice, I guess. How greedy you want to be versus what you want your rewards to be. Was there any other parts of this chart there, Dilbert, that, that didn't make sense? Kind of like, where can we take trades in, in this section here? Like, where do trades exist in here? Yeah, I do, yeah, I do too. I suppose practice more. No, I, I, I know, as I said, I, I see the various levels and stuff like that, and yeah, that's all fine. No, it's more, as I said, um, you know, often I see something that looks like it's holding, per se, but it doesn't, and it's just the way you were saying you saw it was holding. That's what I was more asking about. But, it's it's yeah, really important. Holding. Yeah, it's really important to see the like the base of a range. And like, even if we were on this chart here and we said, okay, like, let's just draw a trend. Okay, this trend breaks. This level can hold it up. Okay, like, e e just... Oops, this level can hold it up. Okay, here's your hold level. If this continues to hold, what is it holding through, right? So, so then you, you can even just say, like, it's holding through this, right? And this is then holding it up here. You, you can see, like, the base of each of these being developed, like right here, for example. It's, it's really important to pay attention to the base of a range. It shows you a lot. Like, even right here, you can see, okay... Here's the base of the range, and it, it's continuing to hold this base, like the, the bottom side of this. It's continuing to hold this through this trend. Like it is continuing to hold that base through the trend, which is just holding this whole level right here, right? Like it's just holding this. This base, like, so, so what you're looking at is a ladder, right? So what you're seeing here is like, oh, a ladder from here, it's laddering to here, it's laddering to here. But notice the base is holding as it's breaking through a trend. Like this is key, right? And then, and then fine. So you adapt your trend out, and you know you're, you're in a larger piece of this now, and you're, testing more and more, you know, of these levels. And, and so you have a larger base developing here. And, and even within that base, you'd have a micro base like this, right? Which is like, okay, you're now holding from here to here like this and developing this base. So you'll notice like if we take this triangle out now, this is the same thing you did against this hold level to develop the base of a move, right? Which, which is just the, the greediest hold level in a move. It, you know, it, it's, it's the greediest hold level in a move and it gets hit and that's fine. Even fine if it's right there. I don't know. Don't care. Point being, base through trend, right? Now you've developed a base through trend here, right? And, and then even here you have like the same thing. So you just add this hold level here, right? And, and then you have the top of this against the bottom of that, making whatever interior trend you have here. Uh, let's move this to here. It's fine. So then even here, you would have had like, oh, here's your interior trend right here. And there might be something even smaller. You can, you can see how the base of each range is holding against these levels. Like this is tested. It can't be this one. This is tested. It can't be this one. So, so now you're here in the move, right? Like even just leave this as reference. Like this is the base of the move, right? That's, that's holding it. Well, not the base of the move, but the, the whole level, which, which is now in here, right? So like you can see the base is developing off whole levels. Like you can see that the falling through of inverse whole levels. Like when you move down, it's off inverse whole levels. Hit an inverse whole level, have your trend, move through. Hit an inverse whole level, have your trend, move through. But like the, seeing, being able to see the base is a huge part of chart architecture because when we look at even this right here now, like understanding the base of a move is like key, absolutely key. And, and you see there's polarity, right? Here's the whole level, the base of the move. Where's my triangle? Here we go. Let's try to get this right there. Like you, you, you can see the base of the move holding into a larger piece, right? And, and then the uh, whole level is on the one minute here. So this has to hold the move down. If this can't hold the move down, the move is gone, right? So then you still have, this is the new hold level and that's the base of that piece of the move. So then you would have something where this is the base, right? This is the top and it's like that against that trend. Right? So you can just drag this back to make it more clear. Yeah, we'll just use that because this magnet tool is kind of weird. 
I will just use that. So, so like you, you can see the base of the move developing a higher ladder. So it's the same thing you're seeing down here. Like the pay attention to the base of a move because it, it, it's polarity, right? Like this is a base of a move on the other side, like this right here. So this, this is the base on the other side, which is again, a base level is like polarity. remove all drawings. So I think it's going to get too confusing if I flip the chart and, and say, here's a level that has to hold it, right? Here's a level that has to hold it. Here's the distribution, the distribution right here. It's the same thing. Like that, that's polarity against the base of the move, right? Like you've got the base of the move here. This has to hold it, right? If it can't hold it, then guess where you're going, right? Wait, I did that wrong. It should be here. Oh boy, now I'm confused. That's wrong side. Okay. Dist distribution. Let's work with the highest time frame here. Let's just go to the four. I don't think there's going to be anything developed past the four. And now we're going to adapt this out to the one, which is right here. Then you'd have something like that, right? So we can turn this upside down. And that's what you're looking at on the other side, right? Base of the move, test it there, test it there, here, even here, right? Like that, that's what you're looking at there. And then your next piece is here. So this would have been like a good relong. Yeah, that would have been like a good relong because you, you know, you, again, your base of your move is like this. Distribution to distribution against polarity, right? So like this is the base of the move. This has to hold it up. Otherwise it's, it's gone. <laughs> 